I remember sitting at Sonic with my mom a long, long time ago. And you know how the bees love to come around, all those sweet smelling drinks that they give you at Sonic. And we're swarmed by bees. We're trying to just sit down here and have a burger in peace. But those bees keep coming around. And then a, a moment of incredible ninja-like reflexes and, and stealth-like moves. My mom slowly is pulling off the, the, the sandal from her foot. And she smacks the table. And there's a big old dead bee there. And it would just continue through the meal. She smacks back in the bees and go, wow. My mom has the power of the sandal. My mom's got the, the poder, the chancla. And so I was thinking about that. And this is fun in scriptures because scriptures is all kinds of crazy fun and all kinds of crazy conviction as well. And all kinds of amazing hope. But this I'm finding in Psalm 108. This is a Psalm of David and he's writing. And it says these words. God's kind of speaking about to his people and about the... Um, the ones that he will correct and uh, he says Moab is my wash basin I throw my sandal on Edom it says it I even highlighted it in my Bible the the chancla right there in the scriptures I throw my sandal and so I would wonder in this season right now that we're in we're in a weird crisis weird virus lots of questions lots of concerns also lots of downtime that can be really good but there could be the question coming up is it what is God doing is God throwing a sandal at us right now is God punishing us and right now I would say no I would, there, we have plenty of reasons to be punished it's not like we're not guilty it's not like we don't deserve um, you know some wrath and some reminders and the fear of the Lord but when God punishes a nation He's usually very clear about it. He, he, he gives the reasons of, like I remember as a kid, when I got spanked, and I got spanked quite a, a you know a little bit, uh, my mom would always be abundantly clear why I was being spanked. So I knew. I think it's the same way with God. If God is going to send a, a punishment or send a warning, send something, uh, he's clear and he speaks through his prophets. And I want to be careful because I know a lot of uh, people, especially if they try to use the term prophet on themselves, they're kind of quirky folks. And I don't always just tune out the quirky folks just because they're quirky. God sometimes really does some amazing things through quirky people. But I don't know what God is doing right now, but I do know that he is God. And that's why I have that peace. That's the peace that passes understanding. So in seasons like this, when we have more questions, we know that God can flex power if he wants to. But what's he doing? I don't know. And I'm okay with not knowing. Even though I love to have the answers. And you know you do too. You love to know why, you know, when and how long. All those kind of questions. God didn't promise that he would give us the answers. But God did promise that he would give us his peace. In his scripture saying, I will give you peace that passes all understanding. And so question for you is which one would you rather have? Would you rather have peace or would you rather have peace? understanding I say kind of want understanding but I'm not guaranteed if I had the understanding and if I had all the answers would it give me the peace and peace is what I really want and peace is what you should really desire and God gives it to us promises it to us through his son Jesus who is the prince of peace so I pray that you rest in that today knowing that God is with us he gives us his peace he gives us his son the prince of peace so rest in that. All right. Talk to you later.